Some people never stop pushing the adrenaline envelope, and unfortunately, these daredevils lost their lives while attempting some insane stunts. Here are a few notorious examples of stunts that went horribly wrong. Wu Yongning was a 26-year-old daredevil who performed stunts on rooftops. Really, really high rooftops, with no safety equipment. At the time of his death, he had shared nearly 300 videos of the stunts, so it's not like he was inexperienced at what he was doing. The one that ended Yongnin's life was performed at the top of a 62-story skyscraper in China. In the video that recorded the tragedy, Yongnin can be seen performing a pull-up stunt and then struggling to climb back up to safety. In one of the most heartbreaking moments ever caught on video, he then loses his grip entirely. What's particularly awful about this story is that Yongnin was mostly doing it for the money. According to the New York Post, an unknown entity was supposedly offering $15,000 for the stunt, and Yongnin planned to use the funds in part to pay for his wedding. According to the Daily Mail, a man named Kyle Lee Stocking attempted to duplicate a feat he saw on YouTube in March 2013. If it had gone as planned, the 22-year-old would have swung beneath the 110-foot corona arch in Utah after jumping off the top. But he misjudged the length of the rope he was using, and instead of swinging he struck the ground, and the impact killed him. The tragedy highlighted a growing problem of people trying to imitate stunts they see on YouTube, from swallowing cinnamon, which according to CBS News can give you a collapsed lung, to jumping off moving vehicles. While YouTube claims to prohibit content that encourages dangerous behavior, the video that inspired the fatal stunt is alive and well as of 2018, nearly five years after the accident, with no warning on it. Russian base jumper Valery Rossov was trying to conquer the Seven Summits, hoping to jump from the highest peak in each of the seven continents while wearing a wingsuit. According to IBT, Rossov had already jumped from the Olvatana in the Antarctic and in 2009 had even leaped into an active volcano. Even in the air, I feel that I, I did it. Rossoff held the world record for highest base jump in a wingsuit. That was for jumping from a 23,688-foot peak in Tibet, which is north of Mount Everest. So the 22,000-foot peak he was jumping from at the time of his death was actually a little bit lower than his record, but that doesn't make it any safer. The 52-year-old daredevil died when he crashed into a cliff after leaping off a peak in eastern Nepal. In another tragic base jumping accident, well-known climber Dean Potter and his friend Graham Hunt died in Yosemite National Park when they jumped from Taft Point wearing wingsuits and crashed into a rocky ridgeline. This accident highlights the sad fact that experience doesn't necessarily protect you. Potter had made the exact same jump at least 20 times, and Hunt was probably similarly experienced. That's something that I need to practice, because otherwise it, it just doesn't happen. Other climbers expressed regret at Potter's death, but the words of fellow climber Doug Robinson may have summed it up best. According to BBC News, he said, We're very sad, but not very surprised. He was pushing the envelope all his life. Free diving is the diving version of free climbing. It's more or less done without equipment, and it's about a million times more dangerous than the version that's done with equipment. According to ABC News, roughly 2% of the free diving population dies every year. That's 100 deaths per 5,000 divers. In 2002, free diving champion Audrey Mest was trying to break the world record dive of 531.5 feet. Everything went well until she was on her way back up. According to the Miami Herald, her cause of death was equipment failure. In No Limits Freediving, an air tank fills a balloon, which helps the diver get quickly back to the surface. In the end, Mess's air tank didn't have enough air in it to inflate the balloon. 